before Easter Sunday, number nine, Maryland Lacrosse, found itself in a spiral. But after an emphatic come from behind victory in Happy Valley, it returns back to College Park with a new sense of life. The unranked Ohio State Buckeyes are riding into College Park with a pivotal win under its belt last weekend. It's the Terrapins and the Buckeyes on Big Ten Plus. We welcome you inside CQ Stadium. I'm Ben Strober, he's Tyler Lochte. And Tyler, the last time these two met in College Park, the Terrapins were in the midst of an unstoppable run. Yeah, this is a much different Maryland team this year, Ben, with three losses to their name, but they're coming off what you would call a juice win, going into Happy Valley and taking down then number four Penn State. And I think the winner of this game is gonna have similar circumstances to their last meeting here. I think it's gonna put them in the driver's seat of the Big Ten. The Big Ten Specialist of the Week, Luke Weirman. Once again, phenomenal in Happy Valley. Went 16 of 27 at the faceoff dot. And he did his best work late in that game, Ben. Maryland down 8-3. They storm back with a 6-0 run in the fourth quarter, in large part thanks to his work from the dot. And Tommy Burke will be the one beside him there at the dot. And we're underway in College Park. And the ground ball is picked up by McDonald and Maryland. And another advantage, Ben, of having Chorus coming off of the wing, it's one less sub that you have to make in the midfield. He's already out there on the field. And Maryland used subbing to their advantage to catch Penn State off guard last week. Well, here's Chorus with it. Syracuse getting another start for this Maryland team. And it'll set up its offense for the first time today. Chorus on the wing. Gives it to Urksa. A little spin, lefty shot goes wide. And Urksa has become a guy that Maryland wants the ball in his stick. I know he's an underclassman, but boy, has he been fantastic. Two-man game, Chorus. And they'll reset at the top again. Syracuse. Spanos got the pull on him. Taking it down, GLE, the shot just misses the cage. And that was good defense there by Johnny Cool. Did a good job to force a tough shot and get the ball back for his Buckeyes. So Ohio State will have its first possession here. Coming off a pretty impressive win in Piscataway over number 19 at the time, Rutgers. It's the first time in program history they picked up back-to-back -back wins over the Scarlet Knight program. Here's Greenblatt, a shot. It's stopped. It's out in front of the net. And somehow, some way, Burles comes up with it. That was dangerous. How in the world did that not go in? I mean, the ball was just sitting there waiting for somebody on the Buckeyes to pick it up and put it in. And somehow they cannot make the play. So McNaney got his first save of the afternoon with that, but got awfully close to being a scoop and score. Urksa at X. And here's Jack Brennan. Hasn't seen the field as much this year as the previous season. But here he is, now on the wing. Urksa, balls on the ground. And how about that defense from Marcus Hudgens, a cause turnover. How about the defense from the polls of Ohio State as a whole so far, Ben? They've just made things hard for Maryland offensively. And you know, we haven't seen Danny Maltz come in yet. I, I don't even really see him on the sideline. That's why Daniel Kelly is starting. Maybe a developing story. It has to be next man up for Maryland. Yeah, State defense stymied Maryland twice. See if it can get it going offensively. The offense at times has been a little lackluster for Ohio State. Defensively has been the strong point of this team. 
Sherrard gets through the hands free. It's poked away. McNaney has it. And McNaney, you know, after a rough start against Penn State, he really locked it down and he really played some of his best lacrosse of the season in the second half of that game. And it seems like he's picking up right where he left off, Ben. Yeah, there are times this season where maybe McNaney was still feeling a little bit of rust from that injury that kept him out all of last season after the second game. Syracuse on the wing here. Has that short stick matchup. This is what they want. Two man from behind. Molliver gives it to Kelly. The shot denied by Fayok. And Big Tasty fired up. His first chance to make a play and he rises to the occasion. Molliver gets the screen. Now he has the short stick on him. And there's Syracuse in front and he scores. Ryan Syracuse with his 12th of the season will give Maryland the one nothing lead. His first year as a starter for this team and he has really been good for this Maryland program. And again, that's, that's just a shot that you can't give up if you're Ohio State, you know, the catch and then coming around on the near side just in front of the GLE. And it was Molliver who got the assist. We have a violation called against Maryland. So Buckeyes with a chance to put one in themselves here. The Buckeyes are coming off one of their best offensive performances all season in that win over Rutgers. 14 goals, eight assists. That tied a season high for points. McNaney finds the outlet. And McDonald will slow things down. McNaney so good at getting rid of the ball so quickly. And so good at getting the ball in his stick in the first place, Ben. Just going beyond saves. It's a guy who's always got an eye for a ground ball. And if you can make a pass like that, start it up in transition, what a weapon to have as a defense. Here's Stowball. And again, I get some early action. I really don't think we're gonna see Danny Maltz today. So again, it's all about that next man up mentality. That's that's a big loss to have. And here's Whittier as well. So some guys not getting as much time, getting more action today. The shot from Kelly wide. Chase was given by Ohio State. That's a nice play by Connor Camille. The midfielder was caught back on defense, but he rewards his team ball back, the ball back. And that's something that'll really get the bench fired up and the defense fired up. And you've got an offensive guy who doesn't get many reps back there making a play like that for the good of the team. That, that's something that will not be forgotten, Ben. So Ohio State loves to run its offense through its star in Alex Marinier. And what a cool story for him, you know, a guy who's been a pole that they realize he's got a strap, move him up to the offense. That's kind of every defender's dream in a way. And here he is on the wing. Short stick matchup, Sharkey. Trying to cover Gannon Matthews here. Now Eric Kohler on him. Good defense by Maryland. Here's Marinier. From the right alley, just take it back and give it to Greenblatt. Greenblatt sweeping left. That's a great switch there from the two shorties. Shot clock under 10. Balls on the ground. And Eric Kohler decided to box out. Didn't go for that ground ball because he knew he had the shot clock on his side. And that's just a smart play, looking up, seeing the clock and the awareness there. But again, I, I think that the best play in that defensive possession was the two shorties switching 
creating, you know, the better matchup and making sure that nobody gets left open there, Ben, at the top. And how about McNaney clearing it again? Something he's done so well his entire career at Maryland. So this Maryland team returned 90% of its scoring from last season, but like you said today, we're not sure if we'll see Daniel Maltz or not. One of the team's leading scorers and some of these younger guys who haven't played as much, a chance to step up today. Looks like we're having a legal screen and we'll give it right back to the Buckeyes. And outside of that point blank shot from Syracuse, uh, Ohio State's done a great job of just making Maryland take bad shots if they even get one off at all. Zari Allen, the fastest player on this Buckeye team. He's got a short stick on him in Stamos. This is what they want. Look at the speed. Allen, fancy footwork out in front. It's on the line. And it's a goal. Ari Allen. is very quick to dispute that. You almost want goal line technology like in soccer. Just what a weird play. You see the speed here from Allen. Trip Stamos on the line. Let's see the ball. Tough to see from that angle. The ref had a better view of it. What did you see there, Ben? It's really tough to tell, but remember, Tyler, this offseason, the Big Ten decided they are not doing replay review in conference games. That was something that kind of bit Maryland last week. Well, that's one that Maryland definitely would have liked to at least have a look at. What a big break for Ohio State. Again, can't really tell from there if it crossed the line or not. So it goes down as a game-tying goal for Ari Allen. And another turnover from the Terps. And I almost feel like he deserved that goal. Just a great move that he put on Spanos. Got him stuck in the net. Came around and made a nice play. It seemed like McNaney was trying to stop it in between his legs. We saw that a lot from Penn State last week against Maryland, but it just got through. And Ben Mayer, York College transfer. Gives it up out in front. Caputo had it knocked away. Maryland with another great defensive possession. See how it can translate it offensively. Tie game here. Five and a half to go in this first quarter. Flag comes in. So this is where Maryland can be smart here. Maybe try to go and one. Molliver finds Kelly. Did that one go in? They say no. They say it hit the pipe. Kelly with his arms up, he thinks it went in. Let's take a look. So Oliver with a phenomenal pass right here. Kelly on the doorstep. Can't tell from that angle. Kelly really thinks it did. Either way, it's going to be a man up opportunity for Maryland where it's 8 of 22 on the season. And that is a play that Maryland would really like to have back. Because, I mean, you're not going to get a look like that many times in a game against a team like Ohio State. Daniel Kelly's got to find the net there. And the official. They're checking the goal. Trying to make sure, yeah, the goal is in its correct place. Owen Murphy starts us off and Chorus takes it from behind and Maryland can really get set up. Irksa is on the wing for Maryland. Murphy, a long one. That one stopped by Fiox foot and he scoops it up on the goal line. 
Pretty much the same play that we just saw at the other end. That one a lot more definitive though, if I got there in time. Chance for the clear, it's knocked out and picked up by Irksa. How about that ride? Maryland trying to push it. It was Elliot Dubik there, Ben. He's in this game. Not a guy that we've seen much this year, but how about the impact that he makes on the ride? Murphy still in. Finds Kelly. Chorus had four goals in that win over Penn State. Here he is, shot turned away by Fayak. Ground ball is picked up by Ohio State, and they'll get it away. And Fayak has had a fantastic game so far, Ben. He's really been locked in. The defense has been giving him shots that he can manage. And he's dealt all, with all of them except for one. Justin Sharar, 27 on 27 matchup with Schaller. He accelerates and he scores. Jack McKenna in number 27 is the one who beats Will Schaller there. And the Buckeyes are out in front of the Terps. And it's just a one-on-one. -on -one. Schaller has the advantage, you would think, with the pole, but the speed, I think, just a little bit too much. And Maryland will take a timeout. They trail the Buckeyes two to one here in College Park. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back here on Big Ten Plus in just a moment. Here's our first look at Nick Meyer's 16 season here with the Buckeyes has done so much for that program. The 2018 co-Big Ten Coach of the Year. He helped raise over $20 million for Ohio State to get its new lacrosse stadium, which opened last season, and it's just beautiful. It's a great facility, and you know he really has done so much for this program. Stamos was able to get the GB, and here's Maryland. And again, the only problem with having you know, Chorus up there is he just expunges so much more effort you know, from that role as the wing on the faceoffs. You cannot have him do it for every single one. So I think Stamos and Kohler have done a nice job stepping up into that role this year as well. The score is 2-1, and it's been a little bit weird so far considering what's happened. Ari Allen scored a goal, which... Can't say definitively if it crossed the line or not. And then Kelly thought he had scored for Maryland, but ultimately the officials say he did not. He was pretty adamant that he did. So that's where we stand. Accelerating to the goal and just missed point blank there by Syracuse. Yeah, Syracuse, he made the last shot from around the same spot just on the other side. And that time, a little bit too far. He was looking for the far post. Spanos, did that one go in? It did. Tie ball game. The amount of times that you have said, did that one go in, so far in this game is unbelievable considering that we're still in the first quarter. Just a weird, weird game of lacrosse, but what a shot this is for Spanos. He loves to come to the front of the GLE and turn and shoot. He's got that motion down, and let's take a look. Yeah, that's definitely in the net. No doubt about that one. Goes in the net and comes off that outside pipe. He shot it across the goal, literally. It went across the net and off that far post and back out. This is definitely a game, you know, you talk about no more replay in Big Ten games. This is a game where you'd really want it. So back at the dot, Weirman and Burke. Weirman with a clean eggs, and as he falls down, he somehow gets that to Kelly. And this is what you don't want if you're Ohio State, Ben, to get Weirman into a rhythm. It's a very dangerous game to play when you keep on giving this Maryland offense a chance to beat you. So Jack Brennan, one of the second line minis, getting some more runs today. Molliver finds Kelly, that one's turned away. And Kelly very frustrated after that one again. That's another chance that he would like to have back, Ben. This offense has done a great job to get him looks. He just has not been able to get them in the back of the net. Weirman's still up there. 
Weirman trying to find his way off, and he will. Yeah, it's Whittier that's going to have to replace him. Thirty on the shot clock. Murphy behind with it. Brennan likes to dodge from this wing. Now Molliver in his usual spot behind the goal. Can someone in white get open for him? He'll take it out himself. The long shot, and that's an easy stop for Big Tasty. Just gobbling up shots so far, Ben. And again, the Ohio State defense has just done such a good job of forcing shots that Baya can get to. So a minute to go here in this first quarter. Been a strange one so far. But Buckeyes playing these Terps extremely tough. It's Owen Murphy who's the last mini back. Now he's gonna try to race back. Ohio State working at behind. And here's Marinier, the sweeping shot is saved by McNaney. And that was the matchup that Ohio State really wants, to get Marinier on a shorty and to give him room to shoot. There was a good job by Red to make the shot difficult. Time winding down in this first quarter. 10 seconds, Urksa has it. Pole switches on him. Tries to find Kelly inside. It's taken away by the Buckeyes, and that'll take us to the end of the first quarter. And when you have that little time left to go in the quarter, you kind of have to force something. That's what Maryland did. But again, it all comes back to just they have not been able to get those quality looks. So the teams coming back to the sideline here after a hard-fought first quarter, 2-2. Two to two. Maryland and Ohio State. All square when we come back for the second quarter on Big Ten Plus. And the two goals against, one of them, we never got a clear look to see if that one went in. Maryland didn't think so. But nevertheless, it's 2-2. Two -two. Face-off dot. Weirman fighting for it. And the ball's still loose. Who wants it? White wants it. Jack McDonald. A crucial GB. And you know, we talked about Chorus and his role from the wing. How about McDonald, the job that he's done this year, Ben? Scooping up ground balls with the pole. I mean, how important is that to a team? It, it just continues to give this offense chances, and it continues to get the bench fired up. And McDonald in his senior season has only gotten better each and every year for this Maryland team. It's just such a great group of poles that John Tillman has at his disposal. Spanos had the last Maryland goal. Here he is, they got the short stick on him and Eli Fisher. Tried to find Chorus and he couldn't get it in his stick. Pushing the pace is Fisher. And they'll reset behind. Flag flies. Flag is down. Chance here for Ohio State. This is McKenna. Had a goal in the first. Now he's got Will Schaller on his trail. And if you're Maryland, you can't afford to give up a goal here. That could give the Buckeyes a chance to go and one. And in a tie game like this, you don't want to have to make yourself have another late comeback. And the two goals coming for that Ohio State team. Not the two usual suspects that Maryland has been as worried about, such as Ben Mayer or Alex Marinier. We'll see if the Buckeyes can get those guys going. On cue, here's Mayer. He's got Stamos on him. Well, T.J. Malone, Penn State's top guy, he was shut down by number one last week. So let's see if Marinier suffers the same fate. 
Erksa caught back on defense. Good pass inside. It's almost picked up by Marinier. He would have had a clean look right there. And the shot clock expires. And that's one that the junior midfielder might want back. Yeah, I think that that is an instance of thinking about the shot before you fully possess the ball, Ben. Because it had to be a quick shot. He only had a second to do it. But I think he overthought it. Ball comes out of his stick. And Maryland can have a sigh of relief. Riley Reese, look at him here in this possession, number 17. He's a pole for these situations. But there is that missed pickup there by... Marinier, that's exactly who Ohio State wanted in that situation, just could not pick up the ground ball. Ohio State is 10 of 31 on man up opportunities this year. And watch Alex Marinier in this possession, but no need for it. That's Ed Sheehan. Buckeyes back in front. And the Buckeyes have come to play. This offense is really looking good. And if you're Maryland, the last thing that you could afford right now is to give them an extra man. Pass to the middle, just making that look easy there from Sheehan. He was held scoreless in that win over Rutgers, but on the board here early in the second quarter. Fight for the ground ball. This is Wehrman chasing it, and he's pushed in the back. And that's going to give possession to the Terps. And it didn't wind up mattering, but Weirman was about to scoop the ground ball. And it seemed like McDonald got a stick in and almost prevented him from doing so. That long reach on the stick for McDonald. Got a little bit disruptive there. Oliver gets the pick, but the ball's free and on the ground. Cullen Brown caused turnover and a ground ball for him. That's about as clean of a caused turnover as you can get. Cullen Brown, a Silver Spring native, played at Landon. Yeah, there's a lot of Maryland guys on this Ohio State team. So, you know, that's another thing to factor in. Maybe they grew up. Watching this Maryland lacrosse team, how special would it be for them to come into this building and beat them, Ben, in their home state? It would be. Here's Marinier. Down low, got deflected, Schaller has it. Tries to find someone, it's Marinier that flips it away. Try to get too cute there, Marinier. And this one flipped all the way back through and the official tried to grab it out of the air because the whistle had blown. What an opportunity that was. You know, for Marinier, full head of steam. Kind of surprised that he even opted to pass at all, let alone in that fashion. Just one shot for Marinier so far. That's the HX Zapatello effect. You know, you had TJ Malone, who was averaging over six points a game going into Sunday, and then. He did have four points, but all of them were off of a result of switches. And I think that Ohio State, you know, they see that. They know that they need to get number 45 off of Ajax Zapatel if they want a chance for him to score. Here's Stowball. Has the short stick on him. But he falls down, balls free. What a timeout by John Tillman. John Tillman wisely calling timeout. So Maryland will keep possession. They trail three to two here on Big Ten Plus. Such a special team, he, special thing rather here in College Park to see these Maryland lacrosse games bring in such a large crowd. And how about all the youngsters coming in here today from many different youth lacrosse teams? Chorus at X. Maryland started slow against Penn State. They've done the same here. How can this offense get it going? Difference is they're only down by one, not five. Spano's going to try a long one. And the Bowie native, Caleb Fayok, 
having himself a brilliant first half. Five saves, st only two goals allowed. He shut the door of Maryland's offense so far. He played at St. John's High School. He was a football player as well at St. John's. That does not surprise me, Ben. 297 pounds, and he's just a beast between the pipes for Ohio State. Buckeyes thought about the hidden ball trick, but how about Kohler not being fooled? Kohler will have to D up right here on Greenblatt. Long shot from Matthews, McNaney. Has that in his stick, the outlet pass is picked up by McDonald. Here he comes down Broadway. Maryland resets. Some reinforcements coming from the midfield. It appears to be that line of Brennan, Murphy, Whittier. Bet. And that's a line that Maryland used a lot towards the postseason last year. Then the early part of the 2024 campaign didn't see those guys as much. Haven't seen Daniel Maltz yet today, so these guys are getting some more runs in. And these guys are really, really good players for this Maryland team. Whittier and Brennan really came alive, especially in that Big Ten tournament. It's a testament to the depth of this Maryland team. And Murphy, he's the type of guy who can shoot from anywhere. We've seen what he can do. He loves to set up just so far out by that Big Ten logo because he can shoot from there, Ben. This is Brennan, walled off. Kelly up top with it. Shot clock is down to three. They're gonna have to find a shot here, and that goes wide off Whittier. And a shot clock violation. This Ohio State defense has come to play. They have. They absolutely have, Ben. You know, we expected that. This, this is an Ohio State team that has been good defensively all year long. They've held some of the top offenses in the country to the lowest totals they've put up. They've held four opponents to their lowest scoring performances, including top 10 offenses like UVA and Penn State. And we'll have a timeout called here by Ohio State. And how about this? The Buckeyes on top of the Terrapins here in College Park. Pretty exciting rest of the first half coming up next year on Big Ten Plus. Ben Strober, Tyler Lochte, happy to be with you here at CQ Stadium. Ohio State will have possession. And Ohio State today, Ben, the set that I think is most interesting. Eight shots, all eight have been on goal. For Maryland, seven of their 13. Alvidian McKenna. Shorty matchup. Ben Mayer and Stamos. Good slides coming from Maryland. McKenna has a step, and he's just wide with the shot. And he stepped in the crease as well. Wouldn't have counted anyway. Exactly right, Ben. And how about this job by Alvidi keeping him too close to the goal? McKenna tried to go for the dive around the crease, but just clipping it right there. And McNaney yet again getting a clear. Maryland's defense has kept them in this game. Defensively, this Maryland team has shifted towards that identity a little more each of the past two seasons. And of course, the biggest testament of that being number one being Born by Brett Maycar last year and then Ajax Apatello this year. Urksa thought he might have had a look for a second. We'll pass off. Syracuse already with a goal in this one. Slide comes. And, and you he'll have to get rid of it. You talk about the impressive performances from Ohio State's defense this year. I think this might be their most impressive half yet. Well, this is Urksa on a shorty. Quick slide. 
and that's been so good all game long. 10 seconds. Molliver will have to make a move. Turning back to his left, the long shot wide. It's chased out by Kelly, but no matter. Shot clock violation once again. Maryland's offense has a lot to discuss at the half. They just have not been able to get anything going. Every single possession, Ben, it feels like that shot clock gets all the way down. Nothing has come easy. And a bad pass from Cullen Brown got under the stick of Fayek. This could be a break here for Maryland. We'll try to restart quickly. I mean, the job that Nick Miles has done with his defense really has been impressive today. Myers is a guy who's huge on player development, has brought in some great additions out of the transfer portal defensively as well, and that's shown today. Yeah, he's made Ohio State a destination. Players want to go there and play under him. Here's Whittier. And you gotta think that that new stadium certainly helps that as well. Maryland has been stymied all game long, offensively. And a big hit there on Kelly. You can see him getting up from that. Spanos has Maryland's last goal. Pass inside, Irksa, somehow, some way. How in the world did he do that? And somehow, some way is kind of fitting for that goal. Not just how it went in, but how long it's been since Maryland has found the back of the net. Their offense has been troubled. And they needed somebody to step up and make a play. And Irksa does just that. What a finish there to the post. So much contact, that goes off of Fayek and in. That's Maryland's first goal since the 239 mark of the first quarter. Wow. And Terps and Buckeyes all even at three. It's not often that you see this Maryland offense silenced for almost 15 minutes spent. Well, the rap on this Buckeye team is that they're notorious for starting slow, and maybe Maryland starting to become that way as well. Yeah, kind of a slow start against Brown, a slow start obviously against Penn State as well. You could argue Virginia. It's a habit that I'm sure that John Tillman wants to break. And it's been a mixed bag, because you go all the way back to the early part of the season, that win over Syracuse at the Dome. That was a fast start for Maryland. Had five different goal scorers in the first quarter. Ball got away for a second, and it's picked up by Hudgens. As much success as Maryland has had overcoming those slow starts, and just is not sustainable. I mean, you're not going to be able to come out every week. It, punched in the mouth to then expect to come back and win. These teams in the Big Ten, Ben, they're just too good. That just won't happen. Something about Big Ten defenses. So aggressive and so good all around. Much like football, at least in the West. Marinier, long shot wide, and that's someone that Ohio State definitely needs to get going. Well, he's going to be on a shorty here out of the break. Zapatello... He sees that. Wonder if Sharky's gonna try to get a switch. Long shot from Matthews, and he's frustrated with himself. That was a good look. I really like that play design there. It looked like Maryland wanted to switch McDonald's to Marinier. Marinier came too far out and created a look. McKenna rolling back. Give it back to Matthews. Has Sharky on him. Switch comes with McDonald. Shot clock down to 10. Great defense from the Terps. 
Matthews far out, he'll throw it away. And now it's this Terp defense that's locking down. And it's just intelligent defense there from Ajax Zapatello. He knows exactly when to switch and he's got the athleticism, he's got the speed to get back to his man if need be. And let's, let's check it out on this possession, the formula for Ohio State defensively. They slide and they slide very early and that's made life extremely difficult for these Maryland midfielders. And you have to be quick with your slides against a team like Maryland. I mean, you cannot afford to be lackadaisical in that department. Syracuse has a shorty on him. There's the slide, the ball's back on the ground. But a whistle. I think Tillman got a timeout in maybe, Ben. It looks that's, like he did. Colin Brown second. was stalking and he knocked that ball free, but the timeout from Tillman will keep possession for Maryland. Tie ball game with a minute nine to go here in the first half. Maryland has possession after that timeout from Tillman. It was nearly another turnover before. Syracuse. And what a smart timeout that was by Tillman. He really has a knack for recognizing when a turnover is about to happen and makes the call. Second time he's done it today. And a big collision between Kelly and Hudgens. Ball on the ground. Who wants this one? It's still loose. It pops all the way out. Fisher can't grab it, and it's picked up by the Buckeyes. Here they come. Spano, Syracuse, and Malver all stuck back. This is a big chance for Ohio State, but 15 seconds to go in the half. Terps late subbing in. Pass gets away from Allen, and it's picked up by the Terps. Canfield. Gets it to Kelly, three seconds. Flag comes in late there. What in the world is going on out there? <laughs> still a minute, or still a second left. I guess Maryland's gonna be man up here. What in the world? You can see the hit from behind there. I believe that's Allen on Canfield. She was running down the sideline. I guess the refs are just gonna say it's halftime. He was the number one goalie coming out of that recruiting class. And as a freshman, he's really stormed onto the scene. So remember, Maryland is man up to get us started here in the second half after that costly penalty. And what a nice boost to have coming out of the half. So a chance for Maryland. See how the offense responds to a pretty poor first half. Maryland spinning it around. Chorus behind. And that pass gets away from Oliver, out of play. And that's the 11th turnover of the game for Maryland. And the 20th overall. And that one's just unforced. Well, the penalty had ended about a second before that missed pass. Either way, you still had, you know, 50 seconds to work with, Ben, on the shot clock. And you were gifted that opportunity coming out of the break, and you waste it. And it's just back to square one for this Maryland offense. Ohio State offensively struggled as well in that first half. Can it get its top goal scorers going is the biggest question. Well, to do that, you're going to have to beat Ajax Zapatello, which just has not been possible this year. And here is Zapatello. Ball knocked free by Zapatello. It's on the ground, and who else but one in white? Tries to flip it up, and that one barely gets to Burles. And here they come, McDonald, he'll shoot it, and he scores it! 
Jack McDonald, for the second time in his career, finds the back of the net. It's 4-3 Terps. And Jack McDonald is no stranger to shooting. And you can see that here, winding it up and firing it into the top of the goal. So much confidence there from number 51. And there's not much that gets a bench more fired up than that. His 13th career shot, Ben. You but gotta a love a pole goal. who just lets it fly. He lets it fly almost all the time, it seems like. But finally getting a prime opportunity right there and he didn't waste it. Two goals to go with two career assists now for him. And he constantly gets it done on the defensive end. And how about here? On the offensive side, he's given his team the lead. And you know, how fitting is that, Ben, for this offense who has not been doing anything, the defense who's been so good, for the defense to come out and say, fine, we'll do it ourselves. We will put the ball in the net ourselves if the offense can't do it. That's exactly right. I mean, defense turned it into offense for the defense. Doesn't get any better than that. And it all goes back to number one. Putting the ball on the ground. Just make it a play. It all goes back to number one, and that's what Tillman said about selecting him to be number one, is all conversations go back to Ajax. Ohio State will look to tie it up here. Shorty matchup for Ben Mayer. There's the slide, Schaller's on him. Great defense by 27. He Ari Allen's got speed. We saw him in this exact position in the first quarter. He'll pass it and it gets away. And how about that possession by Will Schaller? He got beat earlier in this game, but for him to come back and lock it down like that, and all the momentum is in Maryland's favor right now. Maryland tried to restart quickly right there. The sun has really started to come out here in College Park. Maybe it will for Maryland's offense as well. Well, again, they got that boost. They got that lead from a defender. You it, called that win over Penn State for Maryland a juice win. Could that goal for McDonald be the juice goal? Here's Syracuse who already has one. Spanos, long shot. He scores! Eric Spanos for the second time today. It's a two-goal lead for Maryland. And John Tillman wants this to be a sign that the offense is starting to click. Look at the speed. Look at the confidence here from number seven. Doesn't need much room, Ben, and he fires it right into the net. Spanos, a guy who scored in every single game except for the win over Brown a couple weeks back, but a consistent piece on this Maryland offense. And now the eyes here at CQ go back down to that face-off X. Can Weirman keep it going? He's had a good day. He's won six of them. And make that seven with the GB. And that's another clean win. McDonald again, almost got another one. <laughs> you know his eyes got real big oh, when yeah. he saw the open net. And that goal gets big too. If you're a pole and you get one, that, that feels good. You want another one as quick as possible. I give him credit for shooting it. It works out. It stays with Maryland. Maybe a newfound sense of energy from Maryland here to start this second half. Urksa gets the screen from Chorus. Good switch from Ohio State. But now a shorty. Thirty on the shot clock for Syracuse. Two man game from behind. Molliver passes it off. Chorus denied. Oh. Body on the line. Player down for Ohio State. And that was Blake Island you putting his body on the line right there, taking that shot from Chorus right in the leg. You never want to see that. You never want to see a guy 
You know, get in front of a shot like that at that distance. It's a scary sight, and it's good to see him walk that off. I thought it hit him in the chest. Either way, we hope he's okay. And yeah. How about the toughness there from the short stick team midi to even put himself in that situation just fearless? And that's been the mentality for this Ohio State defense today. They have played without fear. They have, and the D-mids have been such a focal point of that defense for the Buckeyes. Nick Myers, huge on the impact that the short stick D-mids can provide in the game. Here's Thomas Greenblatt, who's been quiet today. Buckeyes trail by two. Ball back on the ground, Red knocked it free. And there's Schaller getting the GB. A rare miss GB from Ajax Zapatello. And he gets it to McNaney. Maryland will clear through the middle. Alvide, Vermont transfer. We'll bring it across. Now Vide's just a vet. I mean, he's just a vet. He's, he's been around the game for so long now. And Vermont, what a great program that is. Maryland has taken three guys from that Catamount program to be a part of this team. Very close program, Maryland and Vermont. And all three of them, Sharkey, Alvidi, and Canfield have done a great job. And they've really needed to step up to fill some of the holes that have been left with guys like Maycar leaving. Here's Whittier accelerating. Has a short stick on him. Murphy long one wide. And you saw in that possession, Urksa had a short stick on him in the wing with Eli Fisher. And Hudgens came up and told him to get out of the way and let <laughs> him guard the ball. Good chase. Given by Mitchell Sandberg. Or short, make that Eli Fisher, excuse me. Another short stick D midi in the right spot at the right time. Molliver from back to front. Just could not get it to go. That seems to be how Maryland gets so many goals, you know, coming in front of the GLE. No dice there. So the tides have turned slightly in Maryland's favor, but Ohio State with a chance to end that noise here. And they're going to need this guy to step up. He's on a shorty. Marinier passes off to X. Seems like Maryland has taken Ajax off of that primary assignment. Now he will get back to him. Long shot Marinier right in the stick of McNaney. And that's just trust. That's just trust from Zapatello. He's played in front of McNaney now for a few years and he knows he's okay with giving up that shot. McDonald passes this time. And that one strikes the side of the net. Fans thought it went in here at CQ. It was almost a two-point game for McDonald. Tough to tell from the angle. It looks like from this side that it went in. But again, that was what was so hard for Maryland defensively last year, Ben. When you've got a goalie in there for you know a long time, the defenders know what he wants. That was not the case with Rupel, but... For McDaney, Zapatello was okay with giving up a shot, even from a player that good from that distance. And McNaney, a stone wall in the cage for Maryland. Same thing. He was okay with the shot. If Kohler can push his man wide enough, it will be a comfortable save for McNaney. Spanos, strong, surviving some aggression and some contact on that catch from the McNaney feed. But how about the play from these two goalies that we have been fortunate enough to see today? It's been incredible on both sides. Big Tasty making his homecoming here at Maryland. He's been great, and McNaney is up to his usual tricks between the pipes. Here's Maryland offensively up by two. You know, we knew that we would get a good goalie matchup. I don't think we thought it would be this good. Daniel Kelly got the start today. Hasn't been a usual thing for him this season despite being Maryland's leading scorer last season. What a 
luxury to have a guy like that off the bench. Trying to find some space. Molliver out in front. There was three guys around him. Syracuse from the wing. That one just skips wide. Yeah, Syracuse had some space. He wanted to go low to high. Five on the shot clock. Maryland chased it. And Let's see what Molliver can cook up here. Again, from that on that shot there by Syracuse, from that distance, I think that's exactly what Fayek wants. It goes back to what we were just saying about McNaney. And Molliver will wisely just dump it to the other side of the field, allow for some reinforcements defensively that can set up that ride. Yeah, with the 5-3 lead, you know, no need to try to force something and maybe risk getting delay a game on you. You do not want to go man down here to this Ohio State offense when you've got that offense on the ropes so far in this half. And wow, Ari Allen somehow keeps it in play, but this might not work out in his favor. Here comes Maryland. Alvidi, pull goal times two. Nick Alvidi, the Vermont transfer, add him to the scoring sheet, Terps up by three. And it's just as we said on the last pole goal, the offense has had their trouble. How about the defense coming up big again? And that Ari Allen kept it in play. And this allowed Maryland to set up the odd man break. And Alvidi, eyes got so big, almost identical from where McDonald shot it. And look at that rip. But there's a big difference between Alvidi and McDonald. Ben, this guy was a 14 goal guy at Vermont. It's his first for Maryland, but he can really let it fly. And the juice is full flowing as Ohio State calls timeout. Maryland has found its life. They lead six to three here on Big Ten Plus. Thanks so much on the defensive side for the good of this team and the defense for Maryland has played maybe their best game this year so far today. And I think that they deserve to have two cool moments like that. That will not help Ohio State's cause a violation. Maryland has found its groove. And you know, Ben, if Maryland does go on to win this game, how much fun would film be if you're in the defensive side this week? I think they'd be looking forward to it more than they ever have yeah, I think so. in their entire career. With just shutting down Ohio State and then watching two of their guys find the back of the net, it, it could be the greatest week of film if Maryland can find a way to hang on. Ohio State is a very scrappy team. Don't count them out just yet. Brennan Long's shot goes wide. They'll have to find a way to get a stop and get one back on the board. Scoreless here in the second half are the Buckeyes. And seeing two pole goals, you know, but you wonder, does that maybe make the defense that much better down the line? Pass got away off the stick of Whittier, but it'll come right back into the Maryland offensive zone. It's a good poke, I believe, by Schaller, who kept it in. And Brennan tried to thread the needle through about five different guys right there. That's going to be a turnover. And Brennan's always kind of been a, a pass-first guy, it seems, for Maryland in his career. Again, just such a different role for him this year. And it seems like Kelly's just going to go and dump this, and that's exactly what he will do. But it's just so interesting to see, Ben, the changes – to the Maryland offense over these last few years, guys who were the top guy to now come off the bench. And that's not something that hasn't happened before with this Maryland team. You mentioned Daniel Maltz, who has not played today for reasons we do not know, but he's a guy that was a star earlier in his career in 2021 and then he was subsided to the bench for the year that they won the national championship ga uh, game. Yeah, for Brennan last year, seven goals and 11 assists. This year, a much sa uh, smaller sample size, no goals, but still three assists. Right. And for him, he started 
all 15 games in which he played. Just one start this year. And it came in game one against Richmond, then it was Syracuse who took that spot. That's turnover number 14 for the Buckeyes. And the quick restart got away. So back-to-back -back turnovers from both teams right here. It's just an unforced error there. Irks up the low pass, but if you're Kelly, you know, with nobody around you, you still got to find a way to get that into your sticker. At least stop it and scoop it. Maryland's had the numeric advantage there and threw it away, literally. Ohio State, no scores yet in this third quarter. Desperation time might be nearing. Here's Greenblatt. Marinier dropped it. Fight for the ground ball. Red overran it. Ball still loose, it pops out. And here comes McDonald again, down the seam. He'll pull it out. Irks a long one, Fayok with a big save. Even Ajax Zapatella was up there. Maybe he was thinking, I need to score. And the ball's still free. This is incredible. What a sequence we have here. <laughs> Who has it? It's Cullen Brown, the Maryland native, that comes away with it. And everybody's all over the place. I'm shocked to see that Maryland had all five guys back that they all were supposed to be there after a wild sequence like that. You know, you'd think at least one guy would get stuck down there. A minute to go in this third quarter. Buckeyes need one badly. They haven't gotten one since that first half. The Maryland defense has stymied them all afternoon. Here's Caputo. And look at that shade from Schaller. McKenna has one of the three Ohio State goals. He'll try one here and he gets another one. Jack McKenna ends a huge drought for the Buckeyes. It's six to four. That's his second of the ball game. And just as you said, Ben, boy, did the Buckeyes need this goal. And it's on Canfield, who's a very, very good on ball defenseman. He just beats him to the front. That simple. It's a really, really nice shot through contact to the near post. Back to the dot we go, Weirman, reigning big specialist of the week, has now won nine of 12. Here he comes down the seam, he'll shoot it, and that one a little bit wide, looked like a bit of a possession shot there for Weirman, bounced it and saw Oliver was in position to chase it. 22 seconds to go in this third quarter. And yeah, that's, that's big there, Ben, because that stops the clock and gives you a chance to get your guys on the field with not much time left. That's a smart play. There by number 52. Syracuse with time winding. Slide comes, he fires it, and big tasty right there to gobble that one up. It's gonna take a lot more than that to beat him. And he'll throw it all the way across the field. McNaney had to chase it with Caputo, and that's how this third quarter comes to an end. And how about that effort there after the whistle by McNaney still giving chase? That's just the type of player that he is. Wow. What a third quarter, two pole goals for Maryland, but Ohio State gets one back before the end of the third quarter. Exciting finish coming up next year on Big Ten Plus. Should this rest of the game not go Ohio State's way, they would drop to six and six before having to play at home against Johns Hopkins. What a big game that's gonna be. That's gonna be real fun to watch. Ben Mayer, quiet today. And you can see why, number one in white on him. That's a Hopkins team bed that's kind of been inconsistent at times. And it's the same thing with Ohio State. On their day, Ohio State, a lot better than their record suggests. And their defense, certainly better than the record suggests. You cannot ever take them lightly. 
Ohio State trails by two, but a chance here. Maybe cut into this lead. McKenna has the recent one, and he has two. And the shot goes wide. Good chase from Ben Mayer. I think they actually may have gotten a piece of McNaney's shoe. Lacrosse is a game of runs. Can Ohio State go on one here? Matthews behind the goal. Pass inside, denied by McNaney. Blake Island had a clean look, but McNaney has been phenomenal. That's his eighth save. He really has. You know, he's overcome that slow start, Ben, and he's really found his groove here late in this game, much like he did on Sunday. That game last Sunday, a night game in Happy Valley. Maryland looked lost, looked defeated, but a six to one fourth quarter helped them come away with a five goal comeback victory. They got the spark it needed, and that was all that it took for Maryland to come back in that one. And today, the spark has come from the defensive side, and that's what's given its lead today. And I think that the next goal of this game is gonna be really, really important, Ben, for Maryland. You know, to get that three goal lead back with that defense and for Ohio State, will pull you within just one. Spanos got two in the ball game. Urksa looked like it went off the leg of the defender who's a little bit shaken up. Ball's still loose. Even Fayok trying to get in there to scoop it. There's another Ohio State, oh no, same one still down. Ohio State comes away with it. Player still shaken up in the backfield. Ohio State will play on, and finally, refs will call time. And that's the second time that a Buckeye shorty has put themselves between the shot and the goal. That's Connor Camille, a Rocky River, Ohio native, who's been such a dramatic part of this Ohio State short stick team midi group, and he's got an incredible story. So his eligibility for playing college athletics will run through the fall of next year. He's going to transfer to Coastal Carolina to play wide receiver for its football team. Shows how tough this kid is, and he shows, just took one right off the leg shows right Shows how athletic this kid is, I think, above all. And that's something that you're just going to see more and more. I think that the tr there is a translation between lacrosse and football. And there's been many guys that have shown that. McKenna long shot again. McNaney may have got a piece of it. The chase is won by Ohio State. And the hustle from the Buckeyes has really been glaring to me, I think. I mean, they have ran to every ball, tried to get any chance that they could to give their offense more opportunities. Here's Ed Sheehan. Had a goal earlier for this Buckeye team. Still trailing by just two. Ajax on him, he'll roll back. Tried to find a cutting McKenna, and Ajax nabs it out of the air. And he'll come right back to him. And then right back to the netminder and McNaney. McNaney is quick for a goalie. A little, little high on the pass to Stamos, but no problem for the short stick D midi. Just an athletic play to pull that one down. And here come those reinforcements. Stamos does his job. He comes off. Whittier comes on. Eli Stobaugh on as well. He has the rock. We've seen him a lot today. Defender falls down, he'll pass it. And two guys were cutting, it was Kelly and Whittier. Not sure who the pass was for. How about that ground ball though by Stowball to keep this alive? Spanos 
denied by the stick of Cohen Brown. And then the pass is thrown away by Irksa. And while Irksa is the team's leading scorer, Ben, he has had a major turnover problem this year. That's his third today. He leads this team in turnovers. And Tyler, just a minute ago, you mentioned whoever gets the next goal of this game is going to be one of the more important ones. And here's a chance for Ohio State to do that. Yeah, 30 turnovers this year for Irksa. And it's been a gross game. You just wonder which defense is going to crack here in the fourth. Here's Island. Gets the hands free. Stopped by McNaney. And he's out of the cage. Look at him go for a whistle. And possession goes back to Ohio State. McNaney has to scramble back. That was still a pretty entertaining play for McNaney to get out of the cage and scoop up the GB. Island's got the pull on him. How about the toughness of Island staying in this game after eating a shot at the other end? So Ohio State team is tough, mentally and physically. It's never an easy game against them. Somehow the hands got free, and look who it is. It's Blake Island. It's a one-goal game. Right on cue. And you kind of feel like that's a guy who deserved a goal after stopping one at the other end and sitting for a little bit. He gets a moment like this. And ben Mayer, or this is Caputo. The pass was a little bit low. That is a phenomenal catch in finish by Island. Look at that, scooping it off the bounce. Yeah, what a great angle there from our crew. That's a great goal. That's his eighth of the season. Buckeyes back within one, but here comes Weirman on the break. He has it knocked out by Johnny Cool. Calm, cool, and collected. Stopping Maryland's Fogo. And that's the first time that we've said his name since the first possession when he had a nice play there. All that momentum that Maryland had is long gone. And that play from Cool is monumental. Six to five, Terps on top. But that stops a potential fast break for the Terps and the Buckeyes have a chance to tie it here. Not quite sure exactly what it is, but I know that John Tillman just has an unbelievable record when giving up under 10 goals. That could be at stake here. That's been the magic number in his career. Scoring 10 and giving up less than 10, recipe for success. But today, team in a dogfight and nearly tying it, McNaney turned it away. Stamos, the lefty fling to Ajax. And I love how spread out Maryland is on the ride. It's so hard to defend. Here's Eric Kohler. Excuse me, on the clear. It's so hard to ride against that. Like When you've got that much space to cover, Ben, and that many guys that you need to worry about, and the precision passing across the field, it really is so cool to watch. Here's Maryland offensively. They got some juice for some, from some goals from the defense, but it's quieted down. Yeah, the offense has accounted for just four goals today. And the ball's knocked free. And that's Connor Camille who knocked it free, who was just injured on a shot that struck his leg. He's back in there and making plays. Can you believe the toughness of this Buckeye group? It's just... Incredible. The Buckeye team is inevitable. A hungry group. And by the way, that's the fifth turnover today by Chorus. He's had a rough game. You know, we highlighted him in the open just because he was that good last time out. And he may have gone from his best game of the season to his worst. McKenna, hands free, tie game!
A hat trick for Jack McKenna. And we are all even at six. You can't leave him open. That's a shot from distance that McNaney is usually so comfortable with, but if you give a guy that much room, it's so hard to get anything to it. And listen to this Buckeye bench. They're fired up. They're making all the noise in this stadium. At goal number 15 for McKenna. And the hat trick today. Three in a row for the Buckeyes. That's his third hat trick on the season. Weirman wins his 11th faceoff, and that's a big win right there for Weirman. Trying to just keep the ball in possession so he can get off. You know, this game is very different from the last one that we did together, Brown. But it's not any less entertaining. It's just entertaining in a much different way. Still plenty of time, but something to note, Maryland is 3-0 in overtime this season. That's another thing that's not exactly sustainable. The wall is bound to crack at some point. Spanos thought about a long one. And again, there's been two pole goals. Maryland's offense has mustered just four goals today. Haven't seen Daniel Moltz all game. So that's a big story here with this offense. Spanos, lefty fling is in. Hat trick for Eric Spanos. Maryland back in front. And we talk about how the offense has had their troubles today. That's just the fifth goal from this unit. And number seven makes it 7-6. With the offhand too, Eric Spanos. Doing it all for this Maryland team offensively. Only five goals manufactured by the offense. Right. And he's got three of them. The redshirt sophomore. The young guys getting a lot of runs in today. And making an impact. Weirman, face off win number 12. He's the only Terp that has multiple points today. And that's another smart timeout by John Tillman. Back and forth, we go here in College Park, Ohio State tied it, but Eric Spanos gives Maryland the lead. Five and some change to go on Big Ten Plus. Courtesy of Eric Spanos. And what a thrilling second half it's been. Ohio State went so long without a goal. Maryland had a big scoring drought that went 14 minutes and 50 seconds plus some change before that goal from Spanos. Both teams in this game, I believe, have had scoring droughts of 14 plus. It's just been such a weird game. But again, to win a game like this, it takes grit, takes determination, and it takes making the big plays when you get the chance. And these are two teams that have done that this year. Who is gonna get it done today? So remember, John Tillman took a timeout after Weirman won his 12 faceoff. So a big possession, over a minute to work with on the shot clock. Game clock under five. Spanos, he was getting looked at over on the sideline, but he's immediately back in the game. Pass inside, Spanos, a fourth. Maryland back up by two. I bet I think that Maryland is happy that he is right back into the game. My goodness, what a day for Eric Spanos, the only player in the Maryland offense that has had a good day, and it's been a great one. And he puts that one far post. That's a wonderful pass from Erksa, who's got his second point. And, and that's Eric Spanos and this Maryland team, boy, did they need those two goals here in the fourth. And that's a new career high for Eric Spanos, five points. You can see him tending to his left arm there. 
the arm that scored the go-ahead goal before that one right there. Yeah, I, I don't think he was 100% in that possession, and he just found a way. You know, it goes back to what I just said. It takes grit, it takes toughness to win a game like this. Eric Spanos with that warrior mentality just getting right back out there and helping his team. So that face-off win, even more important for Maryland, trying to kill some time with a two-goal lead. Right, now that you've got that cushion, I think that you can be a lot more slow and methodical and you can wait to find the right shot in these possessions, Ben. Syracuse shoveled it, but he gets it right back. He's got a shorty on him. Here comes the slide. Shot clock nearing 10 here. Trying to dive towards the cage, and it looks like he was pushed in as Eric Molliver, and that's gonna have flags flying all over the place. I believe that was actually Brennan, and that's a very scary play. Look at Brennan coming around, and he gets shoved into the post. That's not something that you wanna see, and he is helped off the field. Here's another angle of it. Pushed from the back and goes head first into the post. And you hope that he's all right. That's just a scary collision, Ben. Maryland goes back to the man up opportunity. A little over three minutes to go in the game. A goal here could go a very long way. And that's a really, really bad penalty to take if you're Ohio State because the shot clock was almost out. Not only is Maryland man up, but if they don't score in the first 30, you know, you don't feel like you need another goal. The defense has been fantastic all game long. And Ohio State can't do anything about this. They can't really pressure if they're down a man. And now finally, as the penalty is killed, they can start to get going. So 20 to work with on the shot clock. That's a penalty that only hurts Ohio State with time. But that's a valuable commodity right now. Spanos had it knocked away. Kyle Foster, the freshman on defense with a big cause turnover on the most problematic offensive player for Maryland today. And now you've got a situation, Ben, because of Maryland just holding it in that penalty. Not only do you need to score twice, but you need to beat Weirman in the middle. And that has proven to be almost impossible so far today. McKenna, he already has a hat trick today. He tied it at six earlier. Now on the stick of Matthews. Left-handed shot bounces wide, but right there to chase it is Ed Sheehan. A little under two minutes to go. A two-goal lead remains for Maryland. Marinier without a goal yet today. He's on a shorty. Hands free and a score. That's Blake Island for the second time today, the second time in this fourth quarter. And it's a one goal game. And hands free has been a common call for you today. And I think that's a good way to describe this. So Ohio State is creating space, freeing up the hands. No need to alter the shot. Yeah, some contact on the back, but nothing on the arms. And Island does a great job there. And now it's the biggest face off of the game. Burke and Weirman at that face-off dot. This is a big one. Major fight for it. Who wants this ground ball? Weirman was down for a second. Burke has it. But oh, he throws it away. 
Still loose, picked up by Island, who just scored. And the ball is still loose. Bodies everywhere, Maryland has it. And who else to get that ground ball than Jack Chorus? And it's thrown away. 108 to go, Ohio State can tie it on this possession. And that can't happen. You've got the ball, if you just hold it, you win the game. And Maryland, I believe Will Schaller just threw it out of bounds. Nick Myers calls timeout. One goal game when we come back. A minute and two to go here on Big Ten Plus. He's on the field right now, and he's got a chance alongside his defense, who's been so good today, to win the game. A golden opportunity for Ohio State. It trails by one. Here's Marinier. Scoreless today. And it's saved by McNaney. The biggest stop of the day comes from the graduate goalie. Maryland has to get this clear off. A long throw down. McDonald completes it to Molliver. 30 seconds to go on the clock. And McDonald has it again. This is the world's most intense game of tag right now. Flags fly. This is going to be offsides most likely on Ohio State. And the clock continues to wind down. Maryland's going to try to kill this whole thing. Yeah, the turfs are going to hope that that penalty doesn't even matter. The Buckeyes gave the turfs everything they had. It didn't matter. 8-7. Terps prevail in College Park. 